Students are never shown the idea, though, that the Earth might be young. I think I know why. This isn't really a science book anymore. It's a book about evolution. Somebody wants to make sure your kids believe that theory because it's part of a much bigger, long-range plan toward a new world order. There's a reason for this. The Founding Fathers who started this country said, We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. They're endowed by their Creator with certain rights. Where do rights come from? Well, they come from the Creator. And if you get a bunch of people together who believe they have rights that come from the Creator, those people do not make good slaves. They will actually throw the tea in the harbor and start a big war. <laughs> they will. Now, if you want to have a one-world government, a new world order like some of these lunatics would like to have, and like is prophesied in the Bible, they're going to get it. You can't have people believing in creation. So they've been working really hard for the last hundred years to take over the school system where they only teach this evolution theory which says rights come from government. Rights don't come from the Creator because there is no Creator. It ties into many things. We cover more on that on video five. For example, do you have the right to have a church? The government says in the Internal Revenue Code 501c3 that you, you can ask to be a, an exemption to the tax laws if you'd like. And most churches do that. They file papers to become a corporation, which is a creature of the state, and then they become 501c3 exempt. But they admitted a couple pages later in Internal Revenue Code 508 that churches are an exception. Why would you give up an exception status to become an exemption? <laughs> Think about it. There's more on that on the website hushmoney.org. Uh, Same thing with marriage. Why do you ask the state for permission to get marriage? Who gives the right to get married? Well, that's another long story. We cover that in our college class. But, but you know, 75% of the kids that go to public schools are going to lose their faith after one year of college. 75%. That's what happened to Crawford Toy. Most of you have probably never heard of Crawford Toy. Crawford Toy was a brilliant Bible scholar. He worked with the Southern Baptist Convention in the eight, late 1800s. He loved the Lord and loved the Bible. He was a professor at the, at the Southern Baptist Seminary. You might know about the girl he almost married. He just about married a girl named Lottie Moon. How many have ever heard of Lottie Moon before? Every year the Southern Baptists have the Lottie Moon offering. Well, Crawford went to Europe and studied evolution after the Civil War. He came back convinced the theory was true. He told his class, he said, the Bible intends to teach a plain six-day creation. The Bible is simply in error at that point. Uh, the Bible's in error? Crawford, maybe your theory's in error. Maybe you have been brainwashed. Uh, folks, it is very easy to get brainwashed. I'm going to try to brainwash the entire crowd here tonight. And then we're going to quit, take some break, and have some question and answer time. I'm going to tell you a little story. As I tell the story, I will brainwash you. Maybe you've never been brainwashed before. It's okay. It's a harmless procedure, right? When I'm done brainwashing you, I will ask you two questions about the story. If you know the answer, it's probably because you saw my video before. <laughs> If you don't know the answer, it's because you were successfully brainwashed. Now, pay attention. Watch carefully. Here goes the story. Once upon a time, a man left home jogging. He jogged a little ways and turned left. He jogged a little ways and turned left. He jogged a little ways and turned left and jogged back home. As he was jogging home, he noticed two masked men waiting for him at home. Who were the masked men and why did he leave home jogging? If you know for sure, don't say it out loud, just raise your hand. Six, seven, eight, about twelve, okay? The rest of you, pay attention. Let's try it again. Once upon a time, a man left home jogging. He jogged a little ways and turned left. I'll give you a hint, that's important. He jogged a little ways and turned left. He jogged a little ways, turned left, and jogged back home. As he was jogging home, he noticed two masked men waiting for him at home. Who were the masked men, and why did he leave home jogging? Anybody new figured out? Four more. Okay, the rest of you, pay attention. We're going to try it again. Now, I'm going to unbrainwash you. Now, watch carefully. I'll tell the same story, and you'll feel yourself get unbrainwashed in a few seconds. Once upon a time, a man left home jogging. He jogged a little ways and turned left. He jogged a little ways and turned left. He jogged a little ways, turned left, and jogged back home. 
As he was jogging home, he noticed two masked men were waiting for him at home. Who were the masked men, and why did he leave home jogging? Uh, the catcher in the umpire, and he hit a home run. <laughs> you say, Brother Hovind, is it that easy to get brainwashed? Yep. You see, as soon as I said a man left home, you started thinking about a house, right? And for the rest of the story, you could not figure out who those two masked men were. If you get somebody off track in the first few seconds, it's real tough to get back on track. Would you like to see how thousands of kids get brainwashed in Duval County every year? Thousands of them, right here in the middle of the Bible Belt. The kid goes to kindergarten. Maybe some kid out of your house, maybe one of your children goes to kindergarten and he gets a book like this, I Can Read About Dinosaurs. Would anybody like to just take a wild guess at what the first sentence in the book says? <laughs> Millions of years ago. Do you think there's any books like this in your school system? Do you think there's any books like this in your public library? Do you think the kids are going to hear this stuff on Nature Channel, Steve Irwin, Crocodile Hunter, Discover Channel, National Geographic? Of course they are. Dr. Seuss, millions of years before you were born. It's everywhere, folks. I go to museums all the time. I am sick and tired of all the museums teaching evolution. So we started our own, a creation museum. Come visit Pensacola, Florida. When they say the earth is millions of years old, that's calling Jesus a liar. Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Do you realize we got Christians that teach their kids, we have death in the world because of man's sin. And then they read them a story about dinosaurs dying before man got here. <coughs> Hello? Have you thought about the inconsistency in your logic? Well, we cover more on that in other series, seminar series, but the Bible says they lived to be 900 years old before the flood. How's that possible? Well, we cover that on video number two. How on earth did they live to be 900? What was that Garden of Eden like? What was it like before the flood? We cover that on seminar part two. And you can watch our seminars right online. And what about dinosaurs? Didn't dinosaurs live millions of years ago? Uh, no. Dinosaurs lived with Adam and Eve. We cover that on video number three, all about dinosaurs. But listen, somebody's going to teach your kids. You started like a slime and you slowly evolved to a human. That teaching is going to destroy their whole philosophy of life. The Bible says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. If a kid goes 12 to 16 years to school in your school system, how is he going to view the world? Now look, I'm not against schools. I'm not against teachers. My brother led me to the Lord. He's been a public school teacher for 34 years. My mom was a public school teacher and retired years ago. She's been in heaven for 10 years now. I'm not against the schools, I'm not against the teachers, but folks, the books teach something that's going to destroy your kids' philosophy. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He says He did it in six days. You know, if the Bible's right about the beginning, uh, maybe it's right about the end also. Mm -hmm. Let's summarize here and we'll quit. God made this world. He owns it. He makes the rules. And every one of us is guilty of breaking His rules. He told us pretty clearly in the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't tell a lie. How many of you have ever told a lie in your life? Come on, put your hand up. You're doing another one. I don't want to hear this pious, not me. <laughs> okay. The Bible says, Thou shalt not steal. How many ever stole something? Come on, you already told me you're a liar. Put your hand up, okay? <laughs> all right, so far we know we're all a bunch of lying thieves, right? <laughs> Do you want to read the whole list and see how, see how we're doing? We're 0 for 2 so far. We better stop right there. There is no question on Judgment Day, when Judgment Day comes, we are going to be found guilty. No question. Which means we're going to be punished. Or you better find a substitute. And that's where Jesus comes in. Praise God. Jesus has volunteered to pay for your sins. Not because you're good, but because you need it. <laughs> you're bad, okay? But He loves you. He wants to forgive you. These deer figured out if they get in the river, the fire goes right past them. It's pretty smart thinking. Hey, did you know if you're in Christ, the judgment's going to go right past you? I deserve God's judgment, but I'm not going to get it. I'm in Christ. That's amazing.